<laughs> this morning, um, I woke up at five to take my dog out for a wee. <laughs> and then I met some. Hey, Candice, how's it going? Hey, Internet, it's going good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I heard you have some exciting news for us. I do, I do have exciting news. What is it? Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> last week um, Alex and I got a puppy. Uh, we have a little baby German Shepherd and her name is Scarlett. And she's really cute but really playful and mm. she walks around with her mouth open just to <laughs> eat everything in our house. But it's really fun to have a little doggy. <laughs> so you have like a baby piranha. Yes, basically, <laughs> with fur. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, we've come to the end of a, a series of lessons on Jesus' death and what it means for us. And so we thought we'll have a fun quiz just to see how much you remember. Okay, are you ready, Candice? I think so. Okay, all right. So we're going to ask you guys a question, and there'll be three options on the screen, A, B, or C, and your job is to choose the correct one, and then we'll call out the right answer. All right, let's go. Question one, who died on the cross to rescue us? Is it A, Moses, B, Jesus, or C, Steve? Um, I'm going with B, Jesus. That's correct, it's Jesus. You guys can read any of the Gospels, so that's one of the four, first four books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, to read exactly what happened. And if you can't read yet, maybe ask mom and dad to read through that with you. Question number two. Jesus died for us. A, because we always make good choices. B, because we obey our parents. Or C, because God loves us. I think it's C, because God loves us. Yes, well done. It is C, because God loves us. In Romans 5 verse 8, tells us that we know God's love because while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. All right, here's our third question. Jesus died on the cross to rescue us from A, sin and death, B, mosquitoes, or C, doing homework. I'm going to say A, sin and death. That's correct. John 3 verse 16 says that God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son, Jesus, so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. Okay, question number four. Who wrote the book of Romans, the book of Ephesians, that we find in the New Testament? All right. A, Philemon. B, Paul or C, Peter? It has to be Paul. Yes, it is. B, Paul. All right, question number five. Because God gave up his one and only son, Jesus, to die for us, we can A, trust every single promise of God, B, be really good at every sport we try, or C, get takeaways every single Friday? A. Yes, we can trust every promise of God. Romans 8 verse 32 says that since God gave up His one and only Son, He will graciously give us all things too. Now these all things aren't everything we want, but it's everything that's good for us and that'll help us to make become more like Jesus. Question six, Jesus died for us so that our sin can be forgiven. This means that A, we can carry on sinning because it doesn't really matter. B, God helps us to say no to sin and live as holy people. Or C, if we sin again, God will stop loving us. I think it's B. Yes. B, God helps us to say no to sin and live as holy people. 1 Peter 2 verse 24 tells us that he himself bore our sin in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin 
and live for righteousness. All right, question seven. Jesus took the shame that comes with our sin on himself. This means that A, we can talk to God about anything and know that he still loves us. B, we can talk to people we trust about our sin and ask them to pray with us. Or C, all of the above. C. That's correct. So both of those are true, but especially the first one. Hebrews 9 verse 14 says that Jesus' blood takes away our sin and makes us clean so we can come to God who is holy without any shame at all. <laughs> what can separate us from God's love uh, if we trust Jesus? A, the coronavirus, B, getting in trouble at school or home, or C, nothing at all? I think it's nothing at all. Nothing can separate us from God's love. So true. Question C was right. Romans 8, 38 to 39 says, Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from God's love that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. All right, our second last question, are you all ready? So God forgives our sin if we trust in Jesus. And this means that if someone else sins against us, we must A, ask God to help us forgive them, just like he's forgiven us. Or B, take some of them, their toys and make them feel really bad. Or C, say something mean about them to someone else. Um... I'm gonna say A. That's correct. If you said A, 100% right. Ephesians 4 verse 32 says, Be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. And our final question, question 10. Jesus died so that these people can belong to God's family and live with Him forever. Question A rich people, B, clever, successful people, or C, everyone who trusts in Jesus and calls him their rescuer and king? I think it's C. Yes, so good, Antone and everyone else. It's C, everyone who trusts in Jesus and calls him their rescuer and king. Romans 10 verse 9 says, If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Cool, that's it. I hope all of you remember just how, how amazing it is that Jesus has died on the cross for each and every one of us because he loves us so very much. Bye.